So today I will be presenting how to win uh, the two Sigma Connect data science computation. Sorry, it's not that I'm very sensitive. Yeah, okay. let's try this one. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so for those of you who have never heard of Kaggle, or are not familiar with Kaggle, so Kaggle is a very popular data science uh, computation platform, and in fact, it's uh, um, today, as of today, so it is probably the most uh, active and largest data science uh, community. So with uh, more than one million registered uh, users, and uh, about 100K active uh, data scientists in participate uh, uh, in a variety of um, data science competitions. So a lot of um, big names, so like uh, Google and Facebook and uh, uh, Airbnb, Amazon, they, all, they are all partnering uh, with Kaggle uh, in hosting uh, some most interesting uh, and challenging data science competitions. Uh, for today, so I'll be talking about um, the two sigma data science computation. So basically, so two sigma is a um, uh, is a hedge fund company uh, known for its uh, advanced technology, so in the machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. And Rint Heart uh, is a um, uh, apartment search website. So they're challenging data scientists all over the world to make predictions on how, much, uh, how many inquiries would be for a specific listing based on the, uh, the, list, the apartments of features like the size and number of bedrooms, number of washrooms, and um, uh, the price, location, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. And uh, not to win a data uh, science competition, uh, you got to be good at um, three things. First of all, feature engineering. So by feature engineering, what I mean is uh, so we need to make the raw data consumable to the algorithms. And uh, second of all, the modern tuning. So there are tons of um, tons of um, uh, algorithms, and each algorithm comes with uh, maybe to form a few to tens of um, you know, parameters and knowing those parameters and knowing how to tune them is a key to, to uh, getting a better um, performance in the data science computation. And the third one is um, specifically for data science computation. Personally, I've done a lot of data ensemble, but uh, technically, in, uh, practically, in real production environment, I've never done that. It's too complex to implement. It would be a nightmare for the engineers. So keep it in mind. So yeah, that's the three things uh, to win a, a data science computation. So today, I'll be focusing on the feature engineering and the model ensemble part. So let's take, a, first of all, let's take a look at the data. So this, for this computation, the one of the things I like the best is that so it comes with the most, uh, probably the most comprehensive data sets. So including category features, uh, numerical features, and, uh, you know, and date time features, and uh, also the images. You know, human beings are visual animals, so we tend to be attracted by the you know, high quality images. And as well as uh, the descriptions, so you know, you know, the, the managers can put some very fancy words in the descriptions to get the attentions of the potential customers. So, yeah, putting how to put them together is very challenging. So today, so I, my focus will be on the imaging, how to process the imaging features, as well as the text features, and so because I, I. My guess is uh, those two so are the most interesting part and uh, are the really, uh, really the, you know, the meat and the potatoes. Okay, let's first of all take a look at the text features. So in this computation, there are two, the, 
uh, there are two types of the uh, um, uh, text feature. One is the description, another is the features. So, by features, hello. Oh. So by features, hello. Who who? Uh, by feature it includes the you know the apartment features such as you know uh, elevator things like that. So the, it's sort of my habit to organize the the to organize the features in groups and try to put together some potential techniques and see how I can actually start with the the, the techniques. So and uh, I kind of um, I, I kind of um, you know put. Um, Categorized, created two groups of uh, feature engineering uh, scheme, uh, schemas. So one is the you know some um, general uh, techniques like count the length of text and the number of words and uh, number of app case letters. So you know some managers they tend to use uh, the app case a lot of the cap, uh, app case words to get the intention, but they're good at bad. So everybody has their own. Opinions, but it's uh, it's better to expose it. So and the number of features and number of HTML tags. So to see so if the you know the 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 the, the manager tend to be organized uh, more organizing or not. And uh, so this are the, the the some common techniques to to uh, extract the feature from text. And uh, there are some uh, more generic uh, techniques to extract the feature from text. So there are um, count vectorizers and the TF, TF IDF vectorizer, word to vec and the SVD. So I'll talk about them in de details. So let's first take a look like at token count encoding. So for that, what that, what that does is to extract every single word and, and create a, a corresponding um, features for each individual word. And uh, if the word occurs in the corresponding text, it will mark the, the corresponding column as one, uh, as the occurrence in, the, in that text. So that's pretty simple. And next one is a little bit more complex. So we know, if we start thinking, so what is, how can we rank the importance of each word? So we may think, we, we may realize, okay, so the frequency, frequency of a word, might be important. But if it's too frequent, that may not be a good thing. So, hello? Hello? Yeah. Let me turn it off. Turn it off. Okay, thank you. Hi. Yeah, so we probably want to, pen, um, so if it, for instance, the, like the, the starting words like they and the, that is, uh, this kind of words, so they, they appear very frequently. So that may, may, there may not be much information. So yeah, I just skipped that. <laughs> okay, so that's why we wanted to, to in, include the TF, which stands for term frequency. Uh, essentially, it's the, the occurrence in the corresponding text, the frequency, uh, the, the frequency in the specific text. And the uh, IDF stands for inverse document frequency. So it's counted as a, a log of the, the occurrence of the, the, that word, the, the, the total, uh, the total uh, examples divided by the number of examples where you can find the corresponding word. So by this way, we can penalize the, the the more frequent. We'll switch the battery. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We can penalize the uh, the more frequent word so to get a more fair uh, presentation of import, uh, feature importance. So this is a so-called TF uh, IDF encoding. And the third one is a, a little bit new to the to the word uh, to 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 the uh, landscape. So which is called the word to vac uh, embedding. So what does that mean? So it creates a vector presentation of each word existing in the, in, uh, in the corpus. So for, we created a, a vector representation um, of a king, and uh, we create another vector presentation of a woman. So by adding the two vector, 
we may end up with uh, hello we may end up with a uh, uh, vector that is very similar to crane so essentially in this way we it allows us to to do some mathematical operations uh, uh, among the words so typically we cannot do that with the real world, right? So, and this is how word to vec does, it, which is a very effective way to encode the text. So, that's uh, the uh, for the to the, the techniques for uh, feature engineering for text features. And the next one, I will be talking about one of the boldest the feature engineering I have done for this computation. So we know location is very important to um, you know the real estate uh, uh, in, in industry and uh, may be very important for the rental market as well. But uh, and in that case, so we the easiest way to think to think about that is uh, so the distance may matter, right? So the distance to the amenities such as uh, subway and the bus station, library and the superstore, they do matter, right? So, but. Uh, the problem is that this kind of feature are not included in the raw data, this computation's raw data. But how can we hack, is this possible to hack it? The answer is yes. So let's show that. So first of all, we'll create a, a couple of feed, uh, filters. By filtering the description with some specific keywords. For instance, we can apply a filter with the keyword subway. So we end up with a couple of, uh, Hundreds, a few hundreds of um, you know listings with uh, the description that has the keyword subway in that, and then I perf perform the, the the space based and density based uh, clustering algorithm on those the the uh, on each groups. So the idea is that, so if um, a listing is boasting uh, the apartment is boasting. It's, on the, it's having um, the keyword subway in the description. So that may indicate it's close to the subway station, right? So, and if we get the, all of, the, the, all of the, the, the listings and do the clustering, we may end up with the groups of, you know, the groups of the, the apartment dis, uh, distracted, distributed in the, in the city, right? And for a specific group, Let's find out the centroid of that group geolocationally. And that centroid might be the, is likely to be the actual location of the underlying, of the underlying subway station. So this is the idea how to hack it. So I actually did that. It took me a lot of time to implement it, but it turned out to be one of the most effective features in the competition. So, question? Oh, yeah. So, next, I'll be talking about the image features. So, again, so I, I, tr I try to group the, the techniques into uh, two, two types. Uh, one is the image statistics, which includes uh, the count of the photos, created daytime, and length, wide, the size, if it's too glossy, and if uh, the color status, and how blur it is, and uh, how brightness it is, so things like that, so which are pretty you know, basic. So you don't need a lot of uh, techniques, so it's just a color, color package, so that will do the job. And next one, so I, 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 need to, I want to, to take advantage of some uh, deep neural networks uh, to extract the features from images. So, how does that work? Let's take a look at the row feature, uh, row pictures, on that corner. So, um, I'm not sure how, how you look at that, but to me, it's a good picture, very good quality, so very good composition and a good night, and so yeah, so professionally it, uh, photoed. So, but uh, how computer sees that? So we can apply object detections to find out uh, which, what uh, objects are in this picture. So for instance, we, and by applying the object detection algorithm, we can identify there's a chair, there's a sofa, there's a TV monitor, and there's there are some potted uh, uh, plants. 
So, there, and therefore, we can identify some hot space in the picture, right? So, if you take a look at the hot area, so this one indicate this is a television room or living room. So, and we can act, we can also extract some uh, additional features like it's it's a closed environment, and uh, there are there are some glass, there are some wood, and uh, it's good for reading and natural light and soothing, and it's glossy. So those are the good indicator for a good co uh, quality pictures. So that's for the uh, feature engineering for uh, images. So I'll just uh, skip the model tuning part, which is um, maybe too dry, and uh, so and uh, talk about the model ensemble. So what does model ensemble means? So I'd like to use the quote from uh, George Box, the famous uh, statistician. All models are wrong, but some are useful. So the how model ensemble works is to have multiple models instead of one, and get them to work together and to get a better result, to get a better result. So there's a very specific, uh, there's a specific uh, technique called stacking. So uh, it creates a, a, several, a, a couple of models and uh, using their predictions as inputs and throw them into a second level model and do the stacking and train the, train the model on top of the prediction from level one models. So, and uh, this way we can get, we can, we can make the, you know, multiple models work together. So, this is my final solution. So, one of the things, uh, so. I think this will work now. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. There's always one little detail that you don't think about. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions about the previous slides that they want to ask before they forget what they were? I assume some of you couldn't hear. Um, I just have a bit of a question, uh, a few questions about the context. Um, so this, this, this context is being used to take uh, data from some sort of data set and transform it into predictions. But they don't know what the original data set is or what the you know, expected output of the model is. Uh, the data set is available at the uh, Kaggle's website. So you just search uh, two sigma rent hub and Kaggle, so you'll find it. Yeah. So the, the question was, where did the data come from? And the, the data came from a, a data set that Kaggle provided, and the context was use this data set to predict um, the, uh, the, the likelihood that that apartment would be yeah. rent, rented. Yeah. yeah. OK. And I'll switch right. this one. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh. OK. Yes. I, I, didn't, I didn't fully understand. Uh, so it, it was the, like you, you took the description, filtered it, and then took the frequency of certain keywords, and then clustered uh, based on. Not really, so. Sorry, quickly. Yeah, so the idea is uh, to fit out, fit out the description by keywords, right? That, that's correct. And then apply a clustering algorithm on the filtered, uh, <laughs> sorry, on the filtered uh, examples. And then, so the intuition is that it's because so, if uh, for instance, if uh, one one hundred five listings uh, boasted the Central Park in the description, that may indicate they are around the Central Park. And if we calculated that 105 listings location and calculated their centroid, so that might be the location of a central park. So that's the intuition. So knowing the location of a central park, then we can calculate the distance between uh, each of the listings within this cluster and the, and the, uh, to, the, to the to central park. No, so one thing I forgot to mention. So the clustering is based on latitude and longitude. 
So, if, so we feed out, filled out the um, other examples by the keywords and perform the clustering based on latitude and longitude. Not based on the description. So you cluster based on latitude, but say these are geographically similar. And if this one's by a subway station, then this one is also by a subway station. Yes. They're geographically you, close, and so you're learning from yeah. the description of the same thing. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Who? No. No. I think it's too loud. It's not quite loud. Okay, yeah. Is there a time dependent to the response variable? Sorry, Kate? Is, is there a time dependent to the response? Or is it the total number of clicks? Or is it the total number of clicks on the ad in the first day, the second day? Is it, was it placed on Monday? Was it placed on Wednesday? What, what about the okay. predictive? The question was, uh, so is the response variable depend on the time? So no. So it's... Uh, it's an over, overall uh, rank of the, the rank uh, of the interest that you are listing. So basically, it comes with the three values: uh, so median, high, and no. Oh, okay. So it's uh, it ten, turning it into a classification problem instead of a, instead of a uh, regression. So, so you model that as an ordinal yeah. variable. Okay. Yes. So you model that as an ordinal or a categorical. Yeah. I actually created a classification for this problem instead of a regression. So because of the target variable is a category call, so medium, high, low. So, Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Oh, the living room? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the image product would help the video and the video. Is it very low number? So did you just set whatever it is to be recognized, or did you set up a regression model? Oh, no. So it just ranked it. It got to the top of three. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it comes with uh, multiple predictions. So, so I just rank it and pick up the top three. Okay. Yeah, no problem. OK. Thank you so much. Oh. So when does the question? <laughs> so this heat map tells so which area is of the interest in terms of the classification. So it, it was uh, extracted from uh, one of the layer of the uh, deep neural network. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Thank you so much.